you, Senator Dunningham. Senator Gallagher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. And I too would like to make a contribution in taking note of the uh, answer to by Senator Brannister's Senator Farrell's question. And the question was fairly clear. Whose recollection is correct, or did the Prime Minister make a commitment to uh, funding the, uh, uh, the respective sides? And Senator Brandis has said, well, it wouldn't be the first time that someone's come away from a meeting with a different recollection. <laughs> but, you know, truly, who is correct, the, Bris uh, the Bishop or the, uh, the Prime Minister of Australia? I don't think it gets any more clear a, a question than that and probably deserved a more concise and straightforward answer. But, you know, my position in this debate is, is you know, is on the public record. But I have... Uh, listen very carefully to the debate on this plebiscite issue. And I'm persuaded by um, Michael Kirby, the Honourable Michael Kirby, who, who made a very precise contribution in respect to this debate in a recent interview. And he says, amongst other things, the Constitution doesn't provide for interposing this in additional step in the lawmaking process. The last time we tried was in 1916, 100 years ago, on the question of overseas compulsory military service. And we haven't really attempted a plebiscite as an interposition for 100 years. And he comes from that position as a juror, as a lawyer and a judge. And basically he goes on to say, we're not a populist democracy, we don't elect our prime minister or president. We're a representative democracy who does things through an elected legislature, which meets in public session, whose record is kept by Hansard, whose speeches are recorded, whose votes are recorded. That's the way we've done it for 110 years, and we really should do it this time. And I'm persuaded by that argument. I think there has been an election. There is a, a government in place, and it should govern, and it should take upon itself uh, the decision-making authority that it has. And proceed in a, a plebiscite with a cost of 160 million, with equal funding either side to add on top of that, would probably seem a little excessive to most of those hardworking taxpayers and electors in this country. And the really interesting thing, Madam Acting Deputy President, is the Westminster system provides for this parliament, the executive, to commit troops in times of war. Without reference to a plebiscite, you know, we, we go into Iraq. We can, we, the, the executive, the Westminster system provides for the executive authority to commit troops. We make agreements and treaties in this place: the Japanese Economic Partnership Agreement, the Korean Trade, Free Degre Trade, Trade, Trade Agreement, the CHAFTA, Chinese Australia Free Trade Agreement, are all made executive prerogative. The enabling legislation comes through these places. So why is it that on this one issue, on this one issue, probably the first time in 100 years, we need to spend 160 million plus on a plebiscite? And the reason is, Madam Acting Deputy President, because in order to get the mantle of prime ministership, the Honourable Malcolm Turnbull had to do a deal, had to agree with the conservative wing of his party that he would maintain this promise by the Honourable Tony Abbott of a plebiscite. It is very, very clear. There is no, his heart is not in it. He's on the public record in other areas uh, committing to marriage equality and support thereof. But in order to stay Prime Minister, in order to become Prime Minister, he had to pick this conservative idea up, this $160 million expense plus funding either side in order to stay Prime Minister. That is as clear as, you know, as clear as day. And those on the other side can debate the issues to and from marriage equality. But in order to get to be Prime Minister, he had an honour the plebiscite uh, arrangement by Mr Abbott. He's now in conflict with a bishop of the Anglican Church in respect of whether he promised funding or not. And really he could just use the executive prerogative. We didn't elect him as Prime Minister. His party room did. Therein lies his problem. He could go out and put this to the Australian Parliament as early as probably this week 
He can't because the Conservative wing of his parliament would probably roll him. That's the awful truth. Thank you, Senator Gallagher. Senator Dean and Tully, is this on this matter?